Friends, good morning. Good Jesus. It's so early. I can't even speak. I hope I can get through this without passing out. But there's always new news going on on SPTV News Live, so we must keep you up to date at all costs. It's currently 6.15 a.m. here in Los Angeles. I don't expect there to actually be anybody awake as 50% of the audience comes from the U.S. of A., but we can always count on Jane Smith to be here. How are you, Jane? So there's two new photos that came out in the um, regards the Danny Masterson trial. And I don't know these two particular two people, but they do appertain to Julian Swartz, who we covered um, a couple of weeks ago. So let's get right into today's story. So there's two photos that came out IDing, um, IDing these people at the Danny Masterson trial. And as we know, that concluded on September 7th, 2023, with him receiving a life sentence. So more Scientology enforcers who were ID'd at the Danny Masterson trial. And these are the photos of the aforementioned people, also known as Chris and Miranda Scoggins, also known as the we don't use the R word couple. So one of the surprising things to come out of the Danny Masterson trial was a photo of one of Scientology's most elusive and notorious figures, a quote, master at arms. Another word for that is a ethics officer, a master at arms enforcer named Julian Swartz. Leah Remini and Yashira Ali made the first known photo of Swartz available online this month, putting a face to stories we, we reported about his strong arm tactics to keep Scientology scandals under wraps. In particular, a horrifying scandal at a Scientology daycare where Swartz convinced parents not to press charges against a teenager who had been molesting children. Now, we covered this earlier on the channel, as mentioned before, in two particular videos. So we have Julian Swartz, the Scientology ethics officer who covers for pedophiles and rapists. And this one 10 days ago where the mother who came forward in the aforementioned uh, daycare from hell story, she identified herself. And this is a really powerful story. And I also told I also told you guys of the experiences that I have with Julian Swartz. He was my ethics officer when I was going up the OT levels, the confidential levels. So if you'd like more information on that, and I'm sure we'll be hearing more about this couple too, as their photos have been identified. So again, in particular, in particular, a horrifying scandal at a Scientology daycare and that's where Swartz was. Con that's where Swartz convinced parents not to press charges against a teenager who had been molesting their children. But Swartz was not the only Scientology enforcer who was unmasked during the Danny Masterson trial. We pointed it out at the time. And by the way, this is from Tony Ortega's blog earlier earlier this morning. And I'll leave a link in the description box for this. We pointed it out. We pointed out at the time that the prosecution seemed to be doing a much better job during Masterson's second trial of making use of visual displays, posting images of key figures to help the jury understand what Masterson was accused of. And also, I just wanted to interject real quick. This is the first trial of this kind, to my understanding, where Scientology itself was allowed to be put into the trial. Now, they weren't on trial themselves. Hopefully that day is coming. But it is incredible that they were actually able to sneak Scientology into this case because without it, there's no way in hell in my opinion, they would have got, gotten a prosecution because Scientology is so important in many ways in this case of Danny Masterson, not least why it took him so long and why it was so difficult for them to actually report the frickin' crimes and get some justice uh, to start happening. So we were stunned to see a photo of Swartz show up during the trial, and we were also impressed to see images of the husband-wife team who had told Jane Doe number three, now that's Chrissy Carnell Bixler, and we have her impact statement on the channel as well, which is extremely powerful. Uh, God bless these women for actually getting this, which still hasn't sunk in. I can't believe he's actually sitting in prison. So we were also impressed to see images of the husband-wife team who had told Jane Doe number three she couldn't use the word rape and who punished her for coming forward about being attacked by Masterson. And Julian Swartz was also one of those people who said, we don't use the R word. They were identified as Chris and Miranda Scoggins. That's the photos that you just saw, and their photos were shown in court. We now have copies of those photos and decided to share them with you. Jane Doe number three, Chrissy, testified that she went to Miranda, an ethics officer at the Celebrity Center here in Los Angeles, to explain that Masterson had raped her in her sleep. 
but she said that Miranda immediately made her feel like she was being punished for reporting the incident. Quote, she explained to me that there was no crime committed and she put me on an ethics program, Jane Doe 3 testified. As part of that program, she was required to write about what had happened, but, but Miranda told her she couldn't use the word rape and that it wasn't possible to rape someone who was your girlfriend. Absolute insanity, as many rapes occur that way. Jane Doe number three and Masterson were living together at the time. Also, as part of the ethics program, she was instructed also to meet with Miranda's husband, a chaplain named Chris Goggins. Jane Doe number, th Jane Doe number three said that it was Chris's job to make her understand how dire the circumstances would be if she violated the rules and caused problems for Masterson. And he had her, quote, demo these rules with small objects intended to show just how serious were the consequences she was facing. Now, to make sense of that, I know this sounds like madness to anybody in the outside world. Stand by for a drink of water. The way Scientology works and why she had to do conditions and make up the damage is because there's these things called the conditions formulas in Scientology, which are the Bible for Scientologists once you get indoctrinated. So because Danny was a celebrity and she was out ethics by saying, by reporting that he raped her and he wasn't um, being a perfect second dynamic, I'm going to lose people with the nomenclature, being a perfect partner, that's what second dynamic means. So Danny's a celebrity. And she's just a lonely uh, non-celebrity in Scientology. And everything in this narcissistic cult is ranked. So Danny needs to be protected at all costs. And she has to do the ethics conditions to make up the damage she did to Danny. Also, what we do on Scientology courses are demonstrations. They're done in clay most of the time or sometimes using little objects. So the reason she has to demo is because we are trained, i.e. indoctrinated in Scientology. Then in order to get the mass of something, in order to understand it for real, we need to physically demonstrate it rather than have it just remain in the mind. So I just wanted to explain why she was doing demonstrations of uh, what might happen should she report Danny or go down the road she's going and why they do these ridiculous, very Orwellian um, things called the conditions that keep you locked in the Scientology bubble world. So let me make sure I'm on the right page. I'll throw you guys in the chat here. I can't believe there's anybody here this early in the morning. Um, so she also testified that as part of the ethics program, Chris and Miranda put her on. Jane Doe 3 had to find ways to make amends to Masterson, such as taking his car to be washed. Again, that would be part of the lower ethics conditions that she would have to apply. Miranda and Chris were dedicated to protecting a Scientology celebrity and punishing his rape victims. We thought it was a good idea to make sure you knew what they looked like. Great point, Tony. And that's the whole reason this channel exists, specifically, excuse me, specifically the SPTV News uh, live part of the channel is to keep a running record of whenever the chickens do come home to roost, you know, hopefully that day will actually come. We'll have a record of who the um, accomplices were, shall we say. And that's why I, um, and I apologize for it guys, but that's why I tortured you with the, uh, with the Christmas stories videos. <laughs> Let me just show you real quick what we got on the, um, before we roll out of here, cause this is a short video, but we have new people coming in. So let me just show you what we cover here and why I put up certain videos appertaining to what we just talked about. These are the, most of the videos are under live here cause we do live streams. But if you go to the homepage, You'll see the latest um, edited videos that are uploaded. We did one with HG Tutor yesterday. We re-edited Connecting the Cults um, the other day before that. And then the ones that I'm talking about that people were tortured by was celebrity Scientologist John Travolta, Michael Pena, Ashton Kutcher, and Danny Masterson, showing how they safe point at Scientology. And it's a part of a program where they get the LAPD in their pocket. And I know that those things are hard to listen to, and they were from several years ago. But like I said, if and when the chickens come home to roost, it's very good to know the Scientology celebrities and the non-Scientology celebrities that participated. We have the Raised in a Secret Society series. If you wonder who the hell is this guy talking, what's my backstory? We've done two seasons so far. There's one more video to 
upload in season one, which will be up later tonight called Theta Trap. I'm finishing that as we speak. And then we'll be doing season three shortly, which will have 10 episodes. And that's the deprogramming season. This is the SPTV News Lies, where we keep you up to date on the, did I just say lies? Freudian slip. SPTV News Live right now, which we're on to keep you up to date on all the latest shenanigans, as you can see at the bottom there of the criminal cult of Scientology knowledge report. Here's the aforementioned Connecting the Cults, where we do deep dives into Scientology and related subjects. We have incredible guests on. This one from Kelly was amazing. Everything from, uh, oh, you guys got to check out the Zero Dark Tony. That one's an absolute train wreck. And Chris Malin exposes Scientology's pedophilia. There's been some amazing, amazing guests that have come on. And again, we have 14 interviews with narcissistic psychopath HG Tudor, because that's a super important subject, in my opinion to understand not only the world that we live in, but specifically cult leaders who invariably, who invariably turned out to be narcissists. Cult clips, interviews, and guest appearances. Anyways, my friends, that is all I have this morning. There's plenty more to come, I'm sure. At least one, like I said, I'll put up Theta Trap uh, later on today and we can continue on with the series. And if you guys did the, um, there it is. People are actually reading the bottom there. Thank you, my friend. Um, did you see Liz Gale talking about how they might be how there they might be doubt over the paternity of Bijou's daughter? No kidding. No, I haven't. But I um I am subscribed to Liz Gale. I watch all of her stuff, and I will definitely check that out. That's very interesting and something I'll be looking into. Wow, doubt over the paternity of Bijou's daughter. Very interesting. Is that a rumor at this point, or do you think that's true, uh, Mona? I'm gonna definitely check that out. Scroll through for any other questions. Um, awesome, Jane. It's not everybody's taste, HG Tutor. And again, you have to use discernment. I don't believe everything of every guest, but you know, we all have our own different opinions, but that guy, um, in my opinion has been, uh, extremely helpful in understanding, um, narcissism. And also, as I talked about in that interview we did the other day, it was running across his information that really gave me a light bulb moment, connecting both my family dynamic is you can have a cult-like family if you have a narcissist in the family, connecting it to a girlfriend I was dating at the time because I seemed to attract these kind of people, and then realizing it could happen in a cult too. No matter what people say, that man is at least fascinating, and he has one hell of a cool put-on British accent. Any other questions before I roll out of here? I'm looking for those question marks. I can't believe there's this many of you here. What, what time is it your guys' time? Okay, we got 2.20 p.m., okay, afternoon. Well, I don't want to keep you guys here forever and just have dead air time. Okay, that's it this morning, but like I said, there's always new bullshit coming in about this cult, so there'll be more videos today, I'm sure, at least one with the um, Theta Trap, and we'll, we'll end off with the, uh, with the jackass that started all this. And as always, my friends, stay safe, stay sane, and stay cult-free. And you find in each and every case you're finding the phenomenon of entities, communications, base ships, other planets, locations, beingness in other states, and all of this, and you find this to be a consistent condition, you have fulfilled this definition of the mass universe.